안녕하십니까? 니콜라스입니다. And today we are going to talk about how to scale our applications to millions of users. This video is based on a talk that AWS gives every year, where expert architects share advice and architecture tips to build applications that can scale to the max using the latest cloud technologies. We are going to start by taking a look at the simplest architecture we can think of and see how we can improve it step by step until it can handle millions of users and requests per second. This architecture is what we used to do in the old days. The user is hitting Route 53, AWS DNS service, and the request is being forwarded to a single server that does it all. One single server is serving the front end, running the logic of the back end, and hosting the database. Even though this might work, we are doing something we should not do, putting all the eggs in one basket. When we put all the eggs in one basket, when a server does everything and the server goes goes down, everything goes down with it, front-end, back-end, and database. Thanks to new front-end frameworks, we have started to separate front-end from back-end. And using AWS, that separation will look like this, where we are using one server optimized for static files serving our front-end and a back-end hosting our logic and data. For our back-end server, we have many options. Amazon EC2 for virtual servers, Amazon ECS, EKS, or Fargate for container management, or AWS Lambda for a stateless code execution at scale. If we choose EC2, which is a single server, we can go very far, but we don't have failover or redundancy servers, and we are still putting all eggs in one basket. If we look at the options we have for compute, there is a spectrum. The lower we go, the more we have to do, configure, and be responsible for, which is the case if we choose to go to EC2. But if we go serverless, as you can see, the only thing we have to worry about is our code. And this is why Amazon recommends AWS App Runner, which is a good balance between not having to worry about configuration, but also being in control of your architecture. With AWS App Runner, we get a load balancer, a server with auto scaling, and other things that make deploying elastic apps super easy. Using App Runner, it is now easier to scale and increase performance. For us as developers, the application became easier to deploy and the eggs are not all in one basket. But what about the database. Should we go for SQL or no SQL? According to AWS, we should start with SQL databases. SQL is an established and well-known technology. There are lots of existing code, communities, books, and you are not going to break SQL databases with your first million users. But if you're one of those special cases that might have terabytes of data per year, then you may need no SQL. You might also need no SQL if you're building super low latency applications. Have many data driven data sets or have an app that ingests data at super speeds like thousands of records per second because that is not most of us we're going to go with SQL the question is which SQL database should we use Amazon Aurora is the fastest growing service in the history of AWS it is a serverless SQL database that scales on demand its paper use and according to Amazon is several times faster than the standard MySQL and Postgres SQL database. It's fully managed, which means that we don't have to worry about hardware provisioning, software patching, setup, configuration, or backups. Combining it all, we will end up with an architecture that has auto scaling both in the server using App Runner and the database using Aurora. We don't manage the infrastructure, which means we don't have to worry about updates, operative systems, security, and all that. With this architecture, we can go incredibly far. We can scale to more than 10,000 users easy. But here is where maybe we are going to have to optimize some of the slow parts. We can optimize front-end, back-end, and database in different ways depending on what the slow parts are. To optimize the front-end, we can use Amazon CloudFront, a CDN or content delivery network that will copy our static front-end file into more than 410 locations globally and give the files to our users from the servers closer to them. To optimize the database, we can use Amazon RDS proxy with with Aurora read replicas. Read replicas are read-only databases that get updated only by the main database. If we have lots of read requests, we can offload some of the work of the main database by using RDS proxy to redirect the read requests to the read replicas and forward the write requests to the main one. The great thing about this pattern is that you can keep adding more and more replicas as you need them. Another thing that we can do to make our database faster is to not use the database 
database at all. Using Amazon Elastic Cache, we can cache the database responses to the most expensive queries of our application. This way, when those requests come in, we can just provide the cached results from Elastic Cache instead of hitting the database. And now it's time to optimize the backend. If we look at how App Runner looks like under the hood, we will see that it is a load balancer and a request router that will hit ECS Fargate tasks where our backend code is running. The good news is that we can just scale the number of ECS Fargate tasks as needed. Using App Runner with more instances and basic configuration, we can scale to 5,000 concurrent requests, which at two seconds per request will mean that you can perform more than 150,000 requests per minute. This architecture can handle hundreds of thousands of requests and can take you to millions of users. But this is where you might start hitting some limits of the services you are using. Since we have a bunch of database replicas for read operations, we are okay on that side. But maybe because we only have one database for write operations, that database might start to tap out. AppRunner today has a limit of 200 connections per instance and we can only have 25 instances per application. If you need more than that, here is where you might have to start rethinking the architecture of your application and start thinking about moving to a microservice architecture. The first thing we could do to sort of divide our application into multiple pieces is to federate our database. We can divide our big monolithic database into small clusters that we can scale as we saw before by adding read replicas and using elastic cache whenever we need it. Maybe if you have lots of data and it's coming too quickly and it's not structured, it's time to start shifting to no SQL. You can use DynamoDB, capable of millions of transactions per second and used heavily by big companies like Amazon.com. To optimize the backend even more, you can take apart some of the routes of your API and leverage the power of Lambda functions to run your code. Just like we divided our database, we can divide our API API in small parts. And we can use Amazon API Gateway as the conductor redirecting requests to different parts of our application. And it is with this idea of separating, caching, and scaling the slow parts of our application that we can hit 10 million users. To set yourself up for success, the way you architect your application is a decision that should be made with careful consideration from the start. Which is why AWS is sponsoring this video. AWS invites you to join the AWS Builders Online Series. The AWS Builders Online Series is a free virtual event designed to equip you with essential AWS knowledge and architectural best practices. It will take place on Thursday, July 13 of 2023. Regardless of whether you are a newbie or an advanced user, there is something for everyone to learn. The event will feature free online training from AWS experts for beginners covering the basics of the AWS cloud and how to get the most out of it in just three hours. And there will be 12 sessions of free online training from AWS experts covering cost optimization, container services, compute services, databases, data pipelines, and successful case studies. For more details on configuring cloud architectures for 10 million users, check out the opening session of the event. There will be technical demos and attendees can even receive a certificate of participation. It's completely free. All you need to do is register by clicking the link below. In just three hours, you will go from learning the concepts of AWS Cloud Core Services to actually utilizing the AWS Cloud. Don't miss this free online event. 언제나 감사하고 사랑합니다. See you on the next one. 다음에 봐요. Bye bye.